You're listening to Colonel Hala, episode three. Hello, friends, and good evening. I'm in a rather foul mood because I just got a call from Pastor Munch on my bone phone. Seems Goliath got out and decided to singe the churchyard. Pastor Munch was beside himself, so I had no choice but to put Goliath in his kennel, which he hates. Yes, I know Goliath. But do you know the terrible feeling of confinement? Imagine you're a notorious gangster, imprisoned at Alcatraz, in a dank and lonely 5 by 9 cell. The tap's cold running water reminds you of the frigid and treacherous waters surrounding the prison. There is no escape from this stony fortress, and that's why you're here. Because you are violent, or dangerous, or because other lesser institutions could not mold your behavior. Only the threat of certain death outside can quell your riotous urges. In today's episode, we visit the Curdle Hollow Prison, and we will meet the town's most infamous prisoner in an episode titled, The Rock. Glad the power finally came back on after that blackout. At least we can watch TV now. I didn't even know the TV still worked. Didn't the sheriff shoot it? Yeah, but if you summon an imp from the nether and command it to sit on top of the television wearing the rabbit ears, you can still get a lot of channels. How exactly did you figure that out? Summoning Simon told me. Oh, I hate that compulsion uttering creep. I heard that. I compel you to shut up. Ha <laughs> ha, you can't tell me what to do. You didn't summon me this time. This moron earwig over here did. Hey now, imp. I compel you to stop hurting my feelings. Apologies, my summoner. I am in your service. But I do have a name, you know. Calling me Imp is a little insulting. Oh, yeah? What's your name? Quintus Gulpukifer. Mm, that's no good. I would think an Imp would have a snappier name, like Crimp or Runkle. God, Chip, he's an evil Imp, not an elf on the shelf. Hey, Quintus Gulpukifer follows his own moral code. I've returned from Goblin's pop-up smoothie shop as requested. Here you are, Miss Von Wingenkamp. One collagen smoothie. Thanks, Rochester. It's best if you don't inquire as to the source of the collagen. Wasn't gonna. Trying to enhance your youthful appearance, eh, Benita? Uh, yeah, ever since that teenage troublemaker Casey tagged a photo of us on Instagram and captioned it, Community Service at the Old Crone Retirement Home, I've been feeling a little self-conscious about my face. Your face is lovely, Miss Von Wingenkamp. You remind me of my beautiful mother, a classic beauty. Of course, she's been dead for 50 years. Yeah. What happened to those at-risk teens, anyway? I thought they had to help us at the shop for community service. Apparently, the sheriff decided we were a bad influence and moved them to the church. Yes, Pastor Munch is making them run the weekly bone bingo game. If they weren't already dead... I'm sure they would die of embarrassment. Hey, can we change the channel here? I want to check on how my hobgoblins are doing. Okay, but then I want to watch the news. Okay, you heard her, Mr. Rimp. You can change to your channel for five minutes, but then you have to change back to the news. Nope, you had to say, I compel you. Well, I've ingested ground-up monster bones and compromised with an imp on the TV schedule. Sounds like my day is off to a very normal start. Y'all in. Colonel Holler, Colonel Holler. 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 Colonel
Colonel Holler. Colonel Holler, Colonel Holler. Uh. Welcome to your afterlife. <laughs> seconds on the board, your Colonel Holler Hobgoblins are running out the clock and once again celebrating their victory over the visiting team in their nondescript blue jerseys. Go Gobs! Rawr, 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 rawr. That's right, get them boys, get them Gobs, that's right. Rawr, 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 rawr. Coach Yellington, now drinking from the visiting coach's skull. Coach, another big win for you tonight. <laughs> Okay, Imp. I compel you to change to the news. Okay. And finally on the community calendar, it's not too late to sign up for this weekend's 5K Shamble to Eat Brains. Sponsored by the Curdle Holler Zombie League. League spoke zombie Gary Gristle is in the CHTV studio now. Walk two brain, run two brains, we eat brains, win big medal. Stand on podium, brains. Speaking of brains, I heard you got the chance to pick the brains of a couple of our sadder candidates for caretaker in the Halloween election. That's right, Putridia. Perennial outsider candidate Undead Zed tells CHTV correspondent Bone Shardley that he'll be campaigning at the 5K Shamble this weekend. Zed, I hear you have a lot of ideas for the role of Colonel Holler caretaker. Brains. Meanwhile, candidate Sheet Ghost Albert Ghost is using his brains to continue to challenge incumbent Belfry Batsinger for the post of Colonel Holler Caretaker. Albert Ghost aired his grievances in a televised debate last night, citing ongoing problems with the town's fright power supply. He says that waning fright power threatens all of Colonel Holler's major systems. I have thoroughly and rigorously researched the fright power situation, and it is my belief that the data shows significant leakage in the fright power supply. Replying to the Sheet Ghost's criticisms via a large boom box left on the podium by an assistant, caretaker Batsinger had this to say. Whatever such nonsense as that uncharismatic boo sayer is saying, I say it is wrong. The town is doing great. This is going to be our best Halloween ever. Now, let's hear some spooky tunes. Okay, that's enough news. What? You're tired of hearing about the election? No, because those as-live setups were terrible. Ugh, they should let me work there. Miss Von Wingenkamp, your duties are here at the boutique. They're gravely important. Fine. By the way, I am kind of tired of hearing about the election, too. Well, you're going to have to quiet your screams, dear. Here come caretaker Batsinger and the sheriff. Ugh, not them, oh boy, not again. I'm stressed Ugh, out. here we go. Good afternoon, citizens. It is a most gruesome day in our fine community. Y'all ain't looking too low on body today. Miss Von Wagenkamp, I ought to cite you for indecent exposure in that get up. Hey now, Mr. Sheriff. The only law she's defying is the law of gravity. Thanks, everyone. Now, now, Sheriff. Here, boy. We're just here to browse your wares. I got a nice hefty zap bonus this quarter, and it's burning a hole in my pocket. Of course, that could just be the brimstone I keep in there. Did he just wink out loud? Ma'am? Well, caretaker Batsinger, we do have a frightfully large array of wares that might convince you to part with a zap or two. Yes, for instance, have you seen these chattering teeth? They're real teeth. Perhaps this magical cummerbund. It works like Spanx, only slightly less scary. Goodness now, uh... How about this rubber bat on a string? That'll spook the sheriff. Designer imposter luggage? Made from the skin of knockoff designer Forgio Harmony? Neither of you is very good at recommending things I've noticed. Remind me not to get my hopes up for my death day gifts this year. Oh, Mr. Rochester, now I do not mind these silly shopkeeps and their wacky shenanigans, but as it turns out, there is something I've heard tell of being at your shop. Something in particular. What's this I hear about a tea set owned by Daylor the Dainty? Uh, do we have that? Most assuredly, Bonita. Don't you remember? You tried to entice your new friends from the park to purchase it when you needed energy for a zap back. That doesn't ring a bell. 
Yes, you recall, the old reaper man and his dog. The dog is Goliath, the hellhound. I don't know the man's name. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I thought that was a dream. Guy. Yes, well, if you do have it, I'm quite interested in obtaining it. It's the loveliest set, and I'm an avid collector of luxurious china. Uh, sure. What does it look like? Well, it's a deep, unsettling green china, fired from a rare clay found only in old graveyards. The pieces are all etched in exquisite gold filigree. We do have that, sir. We just keep it locked behind the display case, so Goblena and Pumpkin don't try to play tea party with it. I'll fetch it for you right away, and I'll wrap the pieces promptly. Well, sir, this week, all cursed items are on sale, bringing your total to 2,500 zaps. Well, now, let me see here. Where's my Ascarican Express Gold Zap card? Here now, son. Okay, have a scary day now, caretaker. You too, Sheriff. You ain't the boss of my day. Well, now, hold on. I said hold on a minute here. There's a piece missing. All of the pieces are there, Mr. Batsinger. I assure you. Well, now, here's the teapot, cup, and the saucer. But there should be a spoon. A gold spoon. It completes the set. And I'm most distressed that you did not include it. Well, here, Mr. Batsinger, why don't you use this spoon? It's custom printed and everything. Curdle holla pop-up smoothie shop? No, Mr. Clearly. This will not do. This will not do at all. Caretaker, it sounds like his manners are trying to cheat you. No, Mr. Sheriff, with the guns with awesome bone handles, I can find the spoon, I promise. We'll start looking. Rochester, do you have any idea where that spoon could be? I'll start looking through these urns. You better find it. Of course, until you do, you leave me no choice. By the power infested in me as Sheriff a Curdle Holler, I arrest thee, Chip Clearly, for one count of fraud. You going to jail, partner? No, not jail. How will I get that hair pomade I like? Now, Sheriff, I'm sure these other two will locate my golden spoon and make things right in no time. But in the meantime, you'd best go with him, Mr. Clearly. Ow! My cuticles! We'll get you out or die trying, Mr. Clearly. You scared yet, boy? I'll have you know I'm 42 years old. And yes, I'm scared. Well, hang on to your wig, invisible boy. You ain't seen nothing yet. This place is pretty dank. I mean, even for a prison in a Halloween death town, I gotta say, it's pretty dank. Uh, well, yeah, well, the pipes is leaky, that's all. Leaky, because they're full of tears cried by a bunch of evil criminals crying for their mamas. And it smells. Sheriff, I think you have a serious mildew problem here. You know they've got dehumidifiers for sale down at the Tomb Depot. That ain't mildew. That's fear you're smelling. You smelling the fear of your own fear of this fearsome place. Smells like mildew. Hush up, boy. Now this here's the mess hall. Wow, Sheriff. The name really says it all. Pipe down, outline. This is where you will fight with hardened criminals over scraps of hardened bread. And if you want mess hall duty, forget getting extras. The oven runs once a week and that's it. Only once a week? How come? <laughs> well, because we ain't got that much fright power in a jail and because we got to allocate that which we do have to more important tasks, like powering our magical cell locks. Well, geez, you'd think a place this scary would have more fright power, especially considering how crowded it is. That mess hall is teeming with bodies. Well, let me ask you something, man, what I can't see and therefore do not trust. On that invisible body of yours, are you wearing a badge that says Sheriff? Well, no. Then I guess you gotta pipe down, hairdo. Now we going through the exercise yard. Squeeze in. Mean haints thick on the ground here. I see my floating face friend here ain't running his yak for once. You speechless boy! Yeah, did you see how that mummy just dunked on the wolf man? That was incredible! But are they playing basketball with a head? Yeah, you know regulation basketballs ain't in our overstretched budget. Besides, why spend on dang balls when we up to our ears and heads? 
Touche. Now let's get you processed. Through this way. You lucky we're gonna do this the right way. Ward and Heck would love to process you into some see-through salami and serve you to the prisoners. I thought you said we only get bread to eat. Oh, by God, son. Ooh, all that walking made me thirsty. Can I get a bubble tea? It's not right. It's just not right. Miss Von Wingenkamp, I know you must be frightfully distraught at Mr. Clearly's unjust arrest. Well, I am, but that's not what I was talking about. How come this Fibula Von Snap has so many followers on Instagram? Her photos are filtered out the wazoo. Can't people tell? She looks like two eyes on a poster board. Focus, Bonita. I am focused. And annoyed, because it wasn't enough that I had to get chip out of jams on Earth. Now I get a whole new set of spooky problems that are weird. Although, to be fair, this is no weirder than the time I had to help him fix the camera he dropped in the touch tank at the aquarium. I can imagine. We all saw what happened, and we're just so upset over it. Hauled off to jail for no reason. A good-looking man like that? A travesty. Well, thanks. But, you know, he is invisible, so I... how do you... Mm. We can tell. We can tell he's handsome under that head of hair. He's an Adonis. And oh, absolutely. yeah. Ooh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my God. Such a hunk. Ooh. And Pumpkin Starry, too. Mr. Chip is my best friend. Thank you, Pumpkin. You're very sweet. Are you best friends? Best friends forever. And I, too, am sorry, Bonita. I come from a long line of persecuted vampires. I burn at the injustice, just as my skin burns in the sunlight. I offer my solidarity. You're all too kind. Yes, though he might be a bat brethren, I cannot say I agree with the actions of caretaker Batsinger. He has gotten fat on the blood he drinks. He cares not for the little guy. Perhaps I will vote for Albert Ghost. Yes, Count. That is exactly what you should do. That's what we're all going to do. He's just made an enemy. Coming into my shop and making demands? How dare he? You want me to hex him? Nope, not yet, Witchy Wanda. Patience. Here's what you can help me do. First, we find that spoon so I can get Chip out of jail. Scour every corner. Then, we take down Belfry Betzinger. I don't know how, but we're going to do it. I won't stand for any more stupid, scary problems in my afterlife. I'm dead as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Now, break! Now, let us walk on by these cells. These haunted halls are packed with the meanest, fangiest, clawful, and unlawful bad dudes you've ever seen. I bet you can't wait to meet your bunk mate. You scared yet? You know I'm scared, but it does seem kind of like you're going out of your way to show me the scariest hallways. I don't know what you're talking about, boy. This is a normal prison tour. This ain't the same tour I give for the scared straight teams. Now behold, Billy the Kid Beholder. He'd be held up a bank and then be held up the Scales Fargo wagon what come to resupply the bank. Ain't that right, Billy? Ooh, he's looking at me. Next door, this here's Hannibal Lectern. Whoa, the famous psychiatrist who ate his patients? No, I said Hannibal Lectern. He stole a bunch of lecterns off a truck that was renovating the university. He's maybe not a good one to include him a tour. I have every right to be here. And this here is actually Kathy. We found her husband's brain in a jar on her mental shelf. He wasn't using it. Ah. But this here's the biggest cell block on account of this one VIP. Very ignominious prisoner. Jeez, the force field around that cell looks very zappy. Remember those static globes you could put your hands on and it would make your hair stand up on end? Well, well yeah, but those things ain't any fun if you ain't got no hair. But don't you put your hands on this cell door. It's very electrocuting. Takes an enormous amount of fright power to keep this beast contained. Well, don't leave me hanging, Sheriff. What's his name? What's his story? He's a stone-cold golem. We call him Rocky. 
We found him in the mountains with a pile of tourists under his crags. Rumor has it a disgruntled chairlift operator at the winter resort turned to dark magic and laid waste to the bunny trail. It took every man we had to get him here. He looks so angry. Well, I guess I'd better start off on the right foot. Nice to meet you, Bunky. My name's Chip. How do you do? Chip, by God, son, he ain't gonna be your cellmate. Ain't you listened to the story? He's a threat to the whole town. We can't even open a cell on account of the risk. By God, son, I mean by God. You don't have to bite my head off, Sheriff. I'm just trying to be pals with the guy. Did the power just almost go out? Sheriff, that's dangerous. You plug in one thing of Christmas lights and bam, Rocky gets loose. Well, that's why we have allocated most of the power to the magical locks on his cell. Good night, boy. It's just in one ear and out the other with you, ain't it? Now get through that doorway. We go into your block. See you around, Rocky. Have a nice day. Well, it was a good idea to look there, but Chip was not using that spoon for a shoehorn. And that's the last place I knew to look. So if it's not there, must have disappeared. Rest in peace, Bonita. Our dear Chip must have buried the spoon nearby, and we will exhume it before the day is finished. You're an optimist, Rochester. Did you all find that spoon? No, Pumpkin. You watched us turn the store upside down for the past two hours. Where have you been? I was sleeping. Okay, well, we can't find it anywhere, Pumpkin. Do you have any ideas? Did you ask your mama where it went? Oh, yeah, we did. We did, Pumpkin. She doesn't know. Now, are you going to help us find the spoon? I can't. I gotta go to a hayride. Say bye to Pumpkin. He fell off a hayride. He was sleeping. Can you believe that? It's hard to tell when our sightless friend is sleeping or watching us with cold indifference. I don't know what else to do, Rochester. I've looked everywhere for that spoon, and I'm worried Chip's never going to get out of jail. I mean, I'm kind of enjoying the break without him, like I can take off my shoes without any smart comments, but I need his help if I'm ever going to get out of this town. A vexing dilemma, but we'll find that wretched spoon. But what if we're too late? Chip has no survival instincts. The other prisoners are probably playing poker with his immortal soul while he's off trying to find the popular table at lunch. Have I mentioned that this is all Batsinger's fault? God, I hate that creep in his smug, stupid face. I hope Albert Ghost rips him apart in the election. That would be a vivid spectacle. Of course it won't happen. That guy needs a ton of help. If you thirst for vengeance, Bonita, why not take a break and volunteer for the Albert Ghost campaign? I believe he's haunting the library this afternoon. And as you say, he could use a reliable soul. Roddy, that's a great idea. I'm too worked up to be useful right now anyway. Can you make sure that nothing explodes, crawls away, or disappears while I'm gone? And will you call me if you find the spoon? Do coffin worms start at the toes? If that's a yes, then I'll be out for just a minute. We're going to find that spoon, and we're going to take down the caretaker. Go then, Bonita, and know that I shall scour every plane of existence until I find that spoon. Okay, but it's probably in the store somewhere. So like I was saying, Albert, I'd be a huge asset to your campaign. Uh, Chip and I hosted four election night extravaganzas with nothing but coffee, scones, and a pea jar, which Chip knocked over with his foot, but if you ask him, he'll swear it was me. Sorry, I'm stressed out. What do you think? Can I help? Also, eyes up here. Your story is quite intriguing, Miss Von Wagenkamp, and I gotta tell you, the situation with Chip makes me mad as fire. I apologize for the outburst, Mimi. As you may have heard, Miss Von Wangenkamp, some folks have called me boring, lethargic, lugubrious, and pitiful, not expected to win. But under these floral bed sheets, you'll find a passionate soul, and I am moved by your story about Chip. It underscores a systemic problem in our wonderful town, a problem exacerbated by the incumbent caretaker. If you refer to the card catalog, you will locate many fine texts on municipal resource management and Robert's rules of order for municipal proceedings. No, snap out of it, Albert! 
My apologies. We need your help, Nita. And maybe we can help you with your friend. That's great to hear. Just tell me what you need. Any details about the spoon incident would be most welcome. Okay, well, it was this morning. And then Rochester says, You look dead tired, which was rude. And then Chip won't put the toilet seat down because he's scared of ghoulies. And then in walks the caretaker. And he's all, I'm Belfry Betzinger. I don't have an inside voice. And, of course, the little sheriff is with him. And whoever gave that maniac a gun. Okay, anyway, I have no idea. But anything relevant to our problem, Miss Von Wangenkamp? Notice any strange behavior? Oh, yeah, actually, yes. Uh, for Chip's sake, I hope this is helpful. Yeah, I get that's where you guys sit at lunch, but where's the popular table? Because that's probably going to be my group from now on, and I want to make sure I go ahead and get that all set up. What are you talking about? We're the coolest guys in prison. Are you sure about that? What's your name again? I'm Copycat. I'm sort of like the den mother of our block. And this is High Five. He's got a finger in everything that goes down around here. Up top. Hey, my man. Ow. Thanks. I can see High Five is basically a disembodied hand with a thousand fingers. But what's your deal? Why do they call you Copycat? I'm a master of disguise. I can become anyone I meet. Oh, so you can transform into other people. Kinda. It's more like I perfectly imitate their voices. So, your monster power is impressions. I'm not sure I know what you mean, Chip. My abilities are powerful and a terrible responsibility. Right. Sorry, yes. Please continue. Hey, copycat. Turn into what's, what's your name again? Trip. Chip. Turn into Chip? Very well. Prepare yourself for metamorphosis, Trip. But brace yourself. Some find the experience most unsettling. Are you ready? I guess so. Okay, then. You asked for it. Here it goes. Hi, I'm Trip. I'm Trip Sunglasses. I'm real cool. Oh man, oh man. He got you perfect. I can't even tell which one's real. I'm real cool. Football. Going to the beach. Secular rock music. Oh man, music. you gotta stop. Oh, oh yeah, that was pretty good, I guess. That's you, man. <laughs> yeah, you got me. How about another one? Who else can you do? How about... Listen up, because I'm the sheriff. I got IBS and a hair trigger, so either way, there's going to be trouble. Uh, that one was better, and I bet it has something to do with why you're in jail. I was charged with smart butt behavior. How about you, High Five? Why are you in here? Dude, I was a gutter holler accountant. I used finger math to count up the bat singer's expenses, and his budget was out of my hand, man. He threw me in here before I could show my work. Well, maybe you guys are cool. I think your devil-may-care attitude is consistent with the Chip Clearly brand. So I've got a crew, check that off the list, now I just need to come up with a nickname. Something cool and dangerous that also speaks to my handsomeness. Well, wh what do you do, man? Like, like, what's your thing? What do you mean, what's my thing? I'm invisible! I'm the invisible man! I don't know. Nothing's coming to mind. Oh, come on, guys. What about the phantom? Or the mop? Or the body? Nah, none of that's grabbing me. What's your real name again? It's Chip. I said it like a million times. Oh, yeah. Chip. You look like a chip. We'll call you Chip from now on. For the rest of your life, you'll be known as Chip. Hey, transform into Trip again. That was hilarious. I have got to get out of here. No, surely not. Can it be? Is it an illusion? After all this time, the caretaker spoon was right here. Did you find that spoon? Yes. Look, Pumpkin. The telltale filigree is on the handle, the scraping blade with squeeze action. It was languishing inside the kitchen sink. Chip must have used it for his craven coffee ritual to stir his twelve sugars. Twelve sugars is too much. It's an abomination! 
Plant yourself right there, my friend. I must call Bonita about our breathtaking discovery. Still her pumpkin found a spoon. I will do no such thing, you horrible melon. I'm gonna assume that was not directed at me. Nita, after searching the known universe, I have found our missing spoon. Really? Oh my god, that's amazing. Where was it? How did you find it? Chip used it to stir his coffee. But that's way too stupid to be true. No, what am I saying? Yep, that's exactly what happened. Never mind. You read my thoughts exactly. Well, that's great news, Roddy. I'm just wrapping up here. You have to meet this Albert Ghost guy. He's the real deal. I think he could actually fix things around here. Plus, he's irate about the caretaker and his shenanigans. At least I think he is. He kind of talks like he's from the planet Xanax. Yes, he could use a jolt of personality. You have no idea. Anyway, hold on to the spoon for me. I'm going to catch a hearse, and I'll be there in like two minutes. Very good, Bonita. We'll be on pins and needles until you return. You're welcome about that spoon. It's not that bad. It's movie night. We're watching Hocus Pocus. for the tennis series. Nita, did you find the spoon? My cellmates are a bunch of nerds. You've got to get me out of here. Well, well, well. Look how far you've fallen, Chip. Come on, Nita. You know what? Somehow I always knew it would come to this. Are you kidding me right now? I am in jail, woman. Did you or did you not find that spoon? No, wait, here, first, put your hand up against the glass, like this, right? He'll, like, yeah, like in the movies, okay. Oh, Chip, Mama says we gotta move on without ya. I am about two seconds away from hanging up this phone and watching Hocus Pocus with the other prisoners. I wouldn't get too comfortable, because I just found a very interesting spoon. Yes, I knew it. Did you already talk to somebody? Do you know what I'm getting out? Oh, man, there's going to be a trial, isn't there? It's going to be a whole thing, and it's going to be really annoying. Uh, yeah, no, all they cared about was the spoon. They are way too crowded to worry about individual cases. And that's why I asked Albert Ghost to scare them with some paperwork. Now they can't wait to get you off the books. Hold on. Albert Ghost? The peekaboo monster with the melatonin voice? That's him. You should have seen him in action. He said the word appendices and the prison staff were falling over themselves trying to get you out of here. I believe that. There are people in here that should not be in here. And that big monster that everybody's talking about? You have no idea. He is jacked. Like ghost eight pack. If he ever gets out, bye bye town. Albert said the same thing, more or less. He's actually really smart. And I think he's got some dirt on the caretaker. Ooh, juicy. Yeah, you should hear him. He's got this whole thing about service. Like, if we ever want to get out of Curdle Holler, I think we have to help him win the election. I will literally do anything to get out of here. But do you really think he can win? Maybe. Uh, does our store sell magic lamps? Oh, that reminds me. Where did you find the spoon, anyway? It was the spoon you put in the sink, dummy! My whirly-twirly spoon? That's what all this was about? Yes, that spoon, Daylor the Dainty. You caused all this mess with your sugar madness. You're like a toddler. We should lock the cupboards. What was all that? What can I do for you, caretaker? I'll need your services once more, Mr. Sheriff. Shh! Do you hear that? Hold on a minute. I'm gonna go somewhere private where we can talk real good. The power outage must have done something to the phone lines. I know! Catch up, Chip! I'm trying to listen! Well, look here now, Belfry. All this here running around is stressing me out something terrible. My stomach's a dang mess. I practically live on the commode. Spent my whole morning guarding the bathroom doors and my kids don't barge in because they don't know nothing about the concept of privacy. Calm yourself, Sheriff. With only a little more subterfuge, we can secure the election. Now that I possess the tasty Tesseract Spoon, I can scoop up all the power we need to persuade the electorate. That's a relief to these weary bones, Mr. Caretaker. Besides, I think we drained all the power we could out of this town. <laughs> we'll talk later, Sheriff. Speak of this to no one. And here's to necessary evil. To necessary evil. And to stomach powders. Well, sounds like we just figured out how to liven up the Albert Ghost campaign. Did the Sheriff say he had kids or did I make that up? 
Good evening, Mr. Clearly and Miss Von Wangenkamp. I thank you both for meeting me in the public library. No problem. Beats prison. In times of exigency, I find that surrounding oneself with books does much to calm the mind and facilitate a rational discourse. Well said, Albert. Nina, will you teach me to read? Shut up, Chip. Walk with me, won't you? Mimi told me what you discovered at the jail. Why don't you tell me what you know and I'll fill in all the dramatic details. Well, Batsinger and the sheriff are doing a lot of maintenance lately. Very observant, Mr. Clearly. Our mischievous friends tapped into the power grid by using a socket wrench and various ratchets. What I estimate to be one-fourth inches in diameter, three-eighths inches in diameter, and one and one-half inches in diameter. Wait, hold on. Did you say three-fourths of an inch? Chip, you're an idiot. What's that about the power grid? Why are they doing that, Albert? Because Batsinger wants to steal the election. It is my belief, based on copious research, that he plans to bribe Kirtle Hollow residents with stolen frack power in exchange for their votes. Oh yeah, I can totally see him doing that. But is it too late to stop him? Perhaps not. The power grid dried up, causing rolling blackouts due to insufficient generation capacity. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, me too. Now I fear my opponent has changed strategies. If my hypothesis is correct, Batsinger plans to extract all our remaining power directly from the sacred fright crystal. With the spoon, of course! That's why he freaked out when we lost it! Correct, Miss Von Wangenkamp. That spoon has the power to breach the crystal membrane and scoop out dollops of our collective frightfulness. Without fright power, Halloween will pass like the whisper of leaves. Our town will suffer and we'll be unable to fulfill our duties. We'll be unable to serve. Meaning we'll be spending a few more millennia in Kirtle Holler. That is also correct. Then we have to stop him. How can we help? I'm overjoyed by your enthusiasm, and I'll tell you my plan. But first I want to show you something so you understand what I'm asking from you. Look out the window and tell me what you see. Um, alright, I see the whole town. It's actually really beautiful. There's the boutique. Look, Chip, I can see all the garbage you left in the sink. Hey, you really can see the boutique. If you look closely past the buildings and the sputtering fright crystal, which some say resembles a giant ice cream cone, you may glimpse the hopes and dreams of all the souls who pass from one world to the next, but who yet may one day won't... Whoa! Oh, oh my God. God! Sorry, I sensed Albert was off topic. The reason Albert asked you here is because we have a special assignment for you. Now that we know what Batsinger is up to, we need proof. You want us to spy on him. That's right. You're an invisible man. And she's got certain assets. You're the perfect team. Yes. We'll go undercover. Just like our Crime Busters segment. Hey, Nita. Remember that time we busted those Girl Scouts imposters? They were Girl Scouts, Chip. They forgot their uniforms. Well, they'll think twice about that next time, won't they? We have some leads and we need you to start immediately. And you have to keep this quiet. Don't let this point back to Albert. Okay, it's a deal. But then we're working on Albert's image. Oh, please do. He's a mess. I'd like to think that others see me for my inner beauty. First, we gotta do something about those sheets. Albert, have you thought about flannel? Chip, you've returned. I was so worried. Hello, Ms. Weaver. How's my favorite spider? I'm wonderful. Thank you for asking. But the Weaving Circle was very concerned about your incarceration. I heard a rumor that you joined a very tough gang of prisoners and that you had to fight all the prisoners for dominance. But then you prevailed and you taught them to use their brains instead of their muscles. Good for you. That's exactly what happened. I also got this awesome tattoo. Oh, look, you've become a hardened man. First, he got that from a cereal box. Although I think it's great that you guys still eat Halloween cereal around here. It's good to have you both back. Pumpkin was driving me mad. Oh, God, we had to thank him for finding the spoon. 
I assume he'll return to Bedevilus in the morning. I think that's a safe assumption. Hey, Rochester, I can't get this drawer open. Did you lock this? One can never be too careful around the criminal element. What? Did, did you really lock it? You can't be serious. Deadly serious. Why don't you go make some coffee, Chip? I think there's still 12 sugars left. Thank you.